Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 50. Um, we have the illustrious Michael Dean on the line, who is an anarchist and founder and host of Freedom Fiends, um, one of the, well, the most popular um, uh, anarchist freedom podcasts there is. So, well, Michael, That's not thanks. True. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the only anarcho-capitalist radio show That's on the true. airwaves. That, that is true. Ah, oh, right. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people would include Free Talk Live in there, but they're Man, always just... talking about voting and running for office and getting uh, signatures and being involved in politics. Saying magic words. And, and one, you know, the other day somebody talked about how somebody got mad at him at Liberty Forum. Uh, it was Jim Babb was talking about how someone got mad at him at Liberty Forum. And Jim Babb's really polite, so he didn't say who it was that was hassling him because the anarchists don't support Rand Paul. It was <laughs> it was Daryl Perry, man. Was uh, it really? No, 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 no. It was Rich Paul. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh that makes more oh, sense. Oh, Rich is – yeah. I, yeah. I, I, uh, I was a big fan of Rich's, and then I don't know what happened. What well, happened to the guy? Rich is as far as I mean. He was like Rich. He's he's also Ron Paul. Paul. He's also on the. He's He's done a lot of acid. He's he's also on the cannabis stuff. Everything else, he still wants to vote. (laughs) He's high. That's why he wants to vote for. for, That's why he wants to vote. He's high. (laughs) I like him too, man. But I just like I can't get. uh, Friends don't let friends vote. So basically, you guys, you guys keep it real. You get, so, you so what is this? Is this our offer to Rich Paul to come on to debate voting? Is I'm this... not going to debate voting. I'll debate Rich I'm Paul right. and vote. I'm right. Why should I talk to someone about it? Why should I have to prove my point? I'm right. I don't debate. There you go. Debating's ridiculous. You know, every time someone says, "Oh, I'm right, you're wrong. You should debate me, or you should debate him." Here's the thing about debate. Debate is a skill that has nothing to do with being right. Like debate teams, a really common practice in high school debate teams is to pick a topic that's the opposite of what you believe and debate it. Like a good debater can do that. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with whether you're right or wrong. It's got to do with uh, rhetoric and oration. I mean, Donald Trump is a good debater, you know? Uh, I don't know. I I define debating a a little different than, than you, Mr. Dean. So. Well, no, I, I well, well, I know you, you were debating about it right now. You? <laughs> huh? You can bait all you want, dude. I'm okay. not bait. I'm not baiting you. I just <laughs> you're a baiter. I de- I, de- I, de- I de- <laughs> on multiple levels. Yeah, I, I uh, agree yeah, with that. I would agree. Maybe on about <laughs> seven <laughs> levels or eight. The, ju- the jury's still they're hung. Like beating. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Um. Well. So no, it's. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about because I was laughing. It's, it's all right, Dave. I'll take See, it. I used, I used my anti-debating hoodoo on you. And <laughs> you did. You did. You it's did. better than debating. So uh, before we really get started, what is our show covered by? What kind of? Oh, Bipcot license. It's uh, the Bipcot no government license allows reuse by anyone except governments. Learn more at Bipcot.org. It's a uh, it's a license that I invented. Actually, Daryl Perry helped a little bit and uh, uh Randy England, the attorney, the the uh, counsel for the Freedom I love Fiends. Randy. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah, so, got to talk so, to him so, for the first time the other night. That was fun. So, what would be what would you say would be the difference between the presidential candidates of uh, Daryl Perry and Adam Kokesh? Like, are they very different in what they're planning on doing? <laughs> I think Daryl Perry takes himself more seriously. I think I I don't know what happened with both of them, but like you know, at this point. Uh, I don't know. Adam <laughs> Kokesh wants to run for president <laughs> under the anarchist party and then dissolve government. It's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's mental masturbation. He's a baiter, just like you. <laughs> I like Adam Kokesh. I like, I like, uh, I like all, I like both those guys, but, uh, I don't know. They're doing it wrong. I think I, I live under the, uh, the idea of never believe anyone's bullshit 100%. So, you know, I, I can believe Adam Kokesh is enough. Enough of his bullshit is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not 100 percent all, think, all in on him. I mean, he. You know. I, I don't. I don't think he can run for president. Isn't he a convicted felon? Yeah, he, 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 he is. Yeah, so. Right. <laughs> I think right. The, the, the only reason I think he's running is uh, to you know do the campaigning and the, the spread the message. He runs for Congress. You could be a felon and be a congressman. He should run for Congress. Aren't all congressmen felons? At least? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I propose two, two term limits. First one in office and the second in jail. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> I agree with that, Michael. You know, it should be like, look, you're going to jail. We're going to investigate those four years. Don't think we aren't. Four out of the past seven governors of Illinois are in prison. Yeah. Yes, that's oh, so true. Man. Wow. Oh, the, like Alabama governors and senators is just, it's an embarrassing. Oh. Well, do you know, um, do you know Mike Vandebel? I know that name. I heard it today for some reason. You don't know who he is. He's in Alabama. He's a, he's a three percenter guy. He's he's like kind of the most visible of all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I know him. I know the yeah. name. I, I just I don't involve myself with those people around here. They those people. Um, <laughs> race race is a big motivator for them. He's he's not racist. He's absolutely oh. not. I, I'm not saying anything about that guy. I'm just saying, he, you know, Dave's the people. The people I've 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 talked to. Okay. Well, no, he's absolutely not racist. And, uh, you know, he's a constitution lover, but, uh, he's one, there's, there's a few constitution lovers that if they're, if you're going to be one, you should be like these guys. And he's one of them, you know, Ron Paul's another one, uh, people that do it right, I think. And he's also been called like a threat to America directly by name by Bill Clinton. So that's something I've never had to happen to me. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's endorse that. You would think they would have black bagged him or something by now. Then it's like it's like Adam. Know. It's like Adam Kokesh's book getting banned by the, by the Department of Justice. I, I'd say that's an endorsement. What you can't bring in the prisons or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they really? blocked they blocked it from the being in the prisons. That was uh, that was uh, the, like the first wave of Achievement. the freedom print was going to be uh, go, a lot of it was going to go to prisons and stuff. <laughs> probably less they probably banned it less because of the content of it and more because they don't want everyone in prison writing a book <laughs> <laughs> getting inspired for that <laughs> seriously wouldn't that, wouldn't that actually help them though because it would keep them more docile if everybody was writing instead of you would think that would actually promote much. stuff like that <laughs> I, bet, I bet that would probably quell anger if it was like look mandatory writing every day <laughs> You must writing, mandatorily writing, write. Writing comprehension class at five o'clock. <laughs> well, no, ma ma no mandatory is not gonna. Well, obviously in our world, but even yeah, there, even in there work. Anything. I'm just. But but, well, but I get what Michael was saying, what he was saying. Like, you know, want everybody doing it, but if they are, I mean, most of them probably won't be very good, and uh, it'll keep them busy. <laughs> I used to do service in a in a jail. I used to bring an Did NA it? meeting into the San Francisco County Jail once a month. I used to bring a speaker in and do an NA meeting. It was pretty weird. It was uh. The weirdest thing about it was that I had to sign a piece of paper that, well, I had to get it fingerprinted too. Like I've never been arrested, but my fingerprints are on record because I did that. Wow. But um, also I had to uh, sign a piece of paper that said that I understood that it was a no hostage facility, which means, you know, if somebody grabbed me and held a shiv to my neck, they're not letting them out the front door. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, hmm. well... That's a level of commitment there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all right. I'll 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 risk getting killed. It's fine. It was what is NA? Is that no, what is it? Narcotics Anonymous? Okay, okay, that's what I figured it was. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I remember the um, the the lady that used to bring me in there used to tease me because I'm short. I'm five five, and she used to say, "You know, we had Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, in here, and he was the same height and build as you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and he used to get he used to get. Marriage proposals and ladies visiting him all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why she would compare you to that just because of the height. Like, it's weird. I know. I mean, it's San Francisco. Like, you know, half the inmates are Mexican. Everyone in there is 5'5". Five five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a weird, that's a weird concept, though, that the people – well – those 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 groupies that follow because that happens with that happens with a lot of the serial killers and the oh you know what he was six one no really? I think it was Charles Manson she was talking about all right that, that's yeah. a more that's a more apropos uh, comparison <laughs> I guess yeah <laughs> Charles Manson's crazy have you seen the, the people that make the memes where they they there's a picture of Charles Manson where he looks similar to like white Jesus <laughs> and they put like a Bible quote on it and it says like please share and they get tons and tons and tons of shares, and it's Charles Manson. <laughs> it's, well, it's not he's, Jesus. He's been in prison how long now? The, the, the last couple of generations. I think he was out. I Manson? Think he got out. Yeah. Who? No, Manson? Manson. He's still oh, in. No, I think he, no, no. I think he got out. 
No, oh, Manson's gonna die in there. Yeah, no, and he but he's been in there for decades. So like the last couple yeah, of generations yeah. actually have no they they've only heard his name. They have no idea who he is. Yeah, you're right. People and you know they they still like I've seen pictures of a bunch of like Vado gangbangers posing with him all happy. <laughs> that are, and they're not that old. Like everyone is told who he is if they don't know who he is. No, that's what I'm saying. But but to the point where you know people just ignore the picture and because they they assume it's Jesus. <laughs> But oh, I thought you, no, I'm talking about the people in prison. Oh, oh, people with in, him. Oh, people in prison. Yeah. So, uh, so, so it, was there anything you wanted to like uh, discuss or talk about or just no, get man, off it's your all mind? You. No, it's all you. All, all me. Jeremy's well, sister. Well, talk about get... Jeremy's sister. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Jeremy's sister. Jeremy's sister. <laughs> Didn't we already do a show <laughs> well, about this? this week? The first frame I saw her in. Uh, uh, what was the show? <laughs> Big Bang Theory. I was just like, wow. I have a Big Bang Theory going on in my head right now, uh, and uh, uh, holy shit, did I know I would start that, a podcast that, I mean, like, that's not with a this joke. hot chick's brother? I mean, how in the hell would that happen? That's pure chaos. Um, well, you know, yeah. it's just you know. And, I, don't, I don't know about you know, that, Dave. It's it's one of the most popular shows. I I <laughs> so oh, the, I know the, the the chances of somebody seeing it and happening to know me probably aren't that low. Probably aren't I know. that high. A low yeah, yeah, but you know, starting a anarchist podcast, All right. uh, you know, I'll give you that one. <laughs> um, there's a lot more layers to that, but yeah, I mean, I, I love his sister. I hope I meet her one day. <laughs> um, I know she's married, but I will confess my love to her. Um, uh, that if you know, we're ever single, <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> This is what in I words, live with on in, a in, in Dave's mind, she, she's married to his, to her. Wait, wait, what would that be? No, no, her no. Future no it's, ex, it's not ex that. It's not serious. It's not that serious. <laughs> it's just it's it's backup plan, you know. Hey, man. Like I've said, I, I don't. I'm used to it. I, I don't have any illusions like that. I just want a picture of her posing with a Bibcot flag. We, we are gonna get that. Don't 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 you worry. Yep. I will make uh, that happen. Fun with flags with <laughs> with oh, <laughs> Missy Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to superimpose her in there. Yeah, there you go. Missy. No, I don't want any photoshopping. I want this. Uh... Well, no, we can get no, but to get well, to get well, to, if you're gonna do the fun with flags with Sheldon, because she was never in a shot with that. So no, no, I don't, I don't, I, I was gonna say fun with. I'll, I'll just label it fun uh, with flags, Miss gotcha. Cooper. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to like have her suggest in it that she's Missy Cooper because she'd probably get in trouble. Yeah, that's how that stuff works. Yeah. Good she point. doesn't have the right to say she's Missy Cooper anymore. Yeah, laws are insane. That's all right. We're, we're saying she's Missy Cooper. <laughs> I can say she's Missy Cooper. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but, she's going to be the, the free embedded wallpapers in the 1.3 version of the Fiend, the, I, I the Fiend did, I, app. I, 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 I did get PM'd about that. He Andrew wasn't kidding. He actually did send me that message and asked me if yeah. it was possible. I, I saw it. It was a great idea. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Like uh, I said, I've, I've dealt with this my whole life. I'm quite used to it. Um, I mean, she's a knockout. I mean, that's all. I mean, I mean, we're ra we're ragging all. We're ragging. We're like we're busting your balls, but she is a knockout. She's a beautiful, man. Uh, Do you have other siblings? Uh, yeah, I have. I have a. Uh, we have. A, we have a younger sister too. <laughs> How young is she? How old uh, is she? What is she now? Thirty. Well, let's see. Um, thirty-two. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, she's like seven years behind me, something like that. So, are your parents on Facebook? Uh, my dad His is. His dad is, <laughs> and he and he's actually a member of our uh, of our Seeds of Liberty group, and he participates right. every once in a while. What's his name? Bill. Bill. Bill Hengler. Heisenberger. Heisenberger. Yeah. Is he an anarchist? <laughs> he's an almost anarchist. Um, he's the one. Um, he's the one who actually put me on this journey without realizing it, because he's a hardcore Constitution thumper. Um, three percent. Aww. Three percenter. There's a picture uh, of him at your sister's wedding. Ex but yep, that's him. <laughs> He's handsome. He's a handsome, dude. Yeah, so I've been told. <laughs> no, no homo. No homo. He's oh, he's wearing a shirt made of a flag. Hasn't he read the flag code? That's a violation. I of flag yeah, believe code. me. I know. He's uh, like I said. He's conflicted. I've got him almost there though. He uh, he's got a cat. I like his cat. <laughs> it's the older you get, the harder it is to change your. Uh, your, your he doesn't your have a cat. Beliefs. If that's a cat, it's probably one of my sisters. <laughs> is this him sitting? With your sister and Turtle from Entourage, or is that I, you I, on the left? I, I, oh my picture, God. I don't know what picture you're looking at, so I have no it's idea. It's going through your album. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you on, uh, you on Facebook. Fine. So <laughs> yeah. we got um, nothing we want to talk about. We're, we're, I think we're fine now, Dave. Um. <laughs> you know, that, that never comes up on The Fiends. We never say, so what do you want to talk about? 
Well, we you know, talk, I mean, I, I, I assume here, Jeremy Dave. doesn't want to talk about his Dave, sister I'm, I I'm much fucking, longer. We had already transitioned. Dave, you, you missed the transition point. Oh, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, I'm, well, I'm not looking at those pictures, but yeah, my dad, he's, uh, he's conflicted. He, uh, like I said, he, he, he's actually come to the point now where he will tell me that um, he agrees with pretty much everything I say. Um, he can't but, really but. argue against me. I just sent you a picture of what I think is him, and to the left of him is, to our left of him, I think is Turtle from Entourage, but I think it's actually you. <laughs> it might be I'll, when, it, when it pops up. Turtle loses bottom. weight for the movie. He's 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 in shape on the, in the movie. So I heard. I did not see. I, yeah. I, I didn't. The movie's out already. I don't remember. Yeah, it came and left like a blip. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't a watch. blip. Wow. I didn't finish. I didn't finish the series either. So. So they just uh, they just made uh, babies without any male participation. Who what? Yep. Who? I I mean, do you want me to read the article? Who's what, they? Oh, they, I thought you were talking about Jeremy's dad and dude. Turtle from Entourage. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Dave, what the <laughs> smooth transition? <laughs> oh, Dave, Dave, seriously, Dave. Are you reading headlines? I don't He's, care about headlines. I know, neither do I. Anyway, um, can I finish my story, Dave? Uh, I'm listening. Uh, yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> Your dad. He's uh, he's he, he's at that point where he, he he agrees, but he still doesn't see it as being realistic. So, and that's a real that's a real big achievement, I think, to get one of your closest family members like. Well, he's the only one. Close. <laughs> most most of my family and my my old friends have all written me off. They all think I'm completely insane. No, but I'm saying that's why it's so amazing. You know, they have a close family member like that to do to get so close to anarchy. That's amazing. Like, is your dad an actor too? No, he looks vaguely familiar to me. Uh, so, did you see the picture? I sent it to you on Facebook of, of oh, you no, looking that's... like Turtle from Entourage. No, that's why I didn't see it. I thought you were sending me an email. Um... You just have a backward baseball cat and a cap and a shit eating grin, is why you look like Turtle in this picture. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like me, though. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's not showing. Where's up. Danilo live? I am with Jeremy over here in New York, Stan. Uh, People's <laughs> I grew up in New yeah, Yorkistan. Yeah. Yes, Michael, that's me. <laughs> I grew up in Chautauqua County. It's the westernmost county of New York State. I lived there till I was eighteen uh, or nineteen. Yeah, I couldn't we're, handle that cold. We're about, we're about ready to leave. It's getting getting pretty oppressive over here. <laughs> getting oppressive. It's been oppressive forever. I Jeremy's mean, gonna yeah. come live in my basement with all his dogs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jeremy's right. dominating Long Island with his pet empires. So I don't know how soon. I don't know how soon you're gonna be able to go there. Um, I don't think some, you could walk dogs awesome in, going. in Wyoming. Everyone just puts like eight of them in their pickup truck, and when they go out, well, they, I know they, right. they I, bring them to the doctor's office and stuff. Well, exactly. That's the problem. Bring like, them to work. You know. I mean, I think Jeremy, you're, you're basically running like an agorist empire because there's like no taxes or regulations <laughs> or licenses for what you do, right? Um, there's like n wow. nothing specific for pet sitting. Like, oh no, or, yeah, there's. Right? I I fall in the cracks in that regard, but. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so you're by default an agorist. Uh, well, entrepreneur kind of. Right? Don't don't I have to be dealing completely outside the. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. FRN I mean, system to be considered an agorist. Uh, Apart from the fact that in the beginning, I love telling the story. In the beginning, how you were like begging the um, the your local oh, government, like, please, isn't there I, some oh, license oh, I could get yeah, or something? I, I, I was the worst type. Make of up something. I did. I I actually I said this the other I just said this the other day. I actually tried to petition the legislature to get a licensure. <laughs> That's how badly I, I was saying, ingrained. I love saying that story. <laughs> That's terrible. man. I did. I, they asked me if I, I asked if there Regulate was a license. Me. They said no. And instead of saying okay, I'll be on my way, I said really. You sure? <laughs> Can't we get one? <laughs> well, wow. I, my, yeah, I I was a I was a hardcore statist. I, That's I, really statist. I mean, I yeah. don't even think like I guess Hank Hill would probably do that, but <laughs> not, most statists wouldn't even do that. They'd be like, I, okay. "All right, I don't want to oh, stand in line point. at the DMV." All right, cool. <laughs> I know. Well, for me, it was a it was kind of a marketing thing because I was just starting yeah, out. Yeah, I know. There wasn't a lot, you know. There wasn't a lot. People of, asked for it, probably. Well, people still do. They don't, and when they tell them there isn't one, then they're like, "Oh, okay." But I yeah. think you need to print out a Bipcot one and I'm, hand it to them. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. Well, I'm starting to Bipcot everything. Well, I told you, I'm, I'm looking into uh, getting my uh, getting my truck uh, wrapped in a Bipcot uh, flag of some sorts. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm nice. still waiting for the first like video of somebody confronting a so-called authority figure and presenting a Bipcot something <laughs> to them. 
I, it doesn't well, exist yet. It should, though. I, I, I think I said that on air one time. I think I said I'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa Delasio said she was going to, that her car registration expired and she was going to present a Bipcot to them next time. And I'm like, I, I need to write her and say, please uh, videotape that. Yes, well, she has to tape it. She would probably fare better than I would, though. She, yeah, she probably runs Good a lot point. less, a lot lower risk of being yeah, pulled maybe. out of the car, <laughs> beaten. Yeah. So, uh, Danilo, uh, what's been up, man? Uh, your wife's out of town. Yep, she's in Virginia right now on a business trip. So uh, I'm over here with the kids at my mother-in-law's. So uh, that's fun. <laughs> that's always fun. <laughs> Lucky you. My mother-in-law, who who's, uh, comes from communist Romania, where she grew up wow. most of her life, so so you can imagine the. Uh... Wait a minute. Actually, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. She goes out of town, and you have to go to your mother-in-law's. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, dude? yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she doesn't want. She doesn't want me confronting my 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 parents um, without her because, yeah, my mother is quite intense. But but interestingly enough, my 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 communist mother-in-law understands the idea of uh, of uh, not necessarily anarchism, but just being skeptical of of government more than my mother, who is a um, uh, self-proclaimed socialist and you know Bernie, firm Bernie Sanders supporter. So, oh, she's gonna be heartbroken. Wait, she came from a communist country and she's a Bernie Sanders supporter? No, 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 no. no, no, no that's my mother. Oh, well, my okay. mother's the Bernie Sanders supporter. My 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 mother-in-law, she's the uh, the um, ex-communist. Communist. Yeah. yeah so, what does she think about politics? Being an ex-communist, or she doesn't really participate. She doesn't really vote. She doesn't really care. She, I think she. I mean, she's mostly thinks that you know most of the time government gets in the way of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, hates taxes, you know, things like that. Immensely in debt. So, how does that work? How yeah. does that work though? When she was used to having everything done by government. Right. Yeah. Well, well how well, well did well, communist well, actually, Romania do everything? Well. Um, I think uh, uh, her image of communism is more of a, um, a you know a cushy image because she had a government job. She worked in the railroad. Ah, in no, the I railroad. know that's that's what I was saying. I, she I was th- part of the bourgeoisie. She was, a, she was. <laughs> right. she was a, in the bureau, the Politburo. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so so you know when 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 people you know reminisce about communism, I think it's important to ask you. Know, Wait a minute, where did you work? What did you do over there? Because if you were a gypsy or if you were a farmer. You didn't have such a nice life, right? What's, but if you were what side of the bread lines were you on, basically? Right, if you're a bureaucrat or you know, or you know, there's cro- farmers that would work all day farming. The government official would come in and harvest their stuff, and then they'd say, "All right, now go get in the bread lines." I can't imagine that. I can't just. I would. I would. I would. I would go postal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, you didn't and, have any weapons. Yeah. Although you'd probably have a pitchfork if you're a farmer. <laughs> And, and as I was talking to my wife, like learning about, you know, anarchy and, uh, and the horrors of communism and statism, you know, she wouldn't recognize that that communism could do such things until she read articles about the genocide of the gypsies and, you know, other uh, hated groups over there. Um, and then she's like, wow, <laughs> like a lot of stuff happened that she did not realize, you know, because. Uh, oh, yeah, because she, she was there, too, right? She was benefiting. Yeah, my wife grew up there until age twelve. Well, well, twelve nineteen ninety four. Communism fell in eighty nine. So she experienced, I guess, so what was that like seven years of. Yeah, yeah. Communism fell in a lot of countries around that time without a single shot being fired, just because it was failing so badly. Yeah, and and I think Romania was the only one that that they actually executed the dictator and his wife. Nice. They tried to escape the country, and then they, they, they got him, and they executed them, both publicly, like on TV. And, and everybody <laughs> watched. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was like like uh, Saddam Hussein. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but, then uh, what, but then what did they do after that? I don't, I don't remember the history of Romania after that. They didn't go – it's not like they went free market after that, did they? No, they stayed they – These countries uh, are all kind of socialist. Yeah. They stayed communist. All of Eastern Europe. Although, although she does, she does remember the years afterwards. You know, like um, a lot more variety, a lot more, um, you know, businesses sprout, sprang up. A lot more, like the the TV channels, you know, became numerous, and you could watch anything. And you know, and you, oh yeah, the other thing was radio, right? A lot of radio was censored and suppressed, and then you know, Western um, radio stations were coming in, so, so that kind of stuff changed. <clears throat> you know, it, it it's I make a point of saying that the Freedom Feeds are the only. You know, anarcho-capitalist radio syndicated radio show in the world, and 
people are like, yeah, whatever. And, and it was, I like that you guys said it because I think it's a big thing because first of mm -hmm. all, it couldn't happen in any other country unless it was pirate radio. Mm -hmm. Like it could not happen on government license radio. And, uh, you know, we're, we're probably losing stations at the rate of like, you know, four a year and we're probably not going to be on any stations in four years, but, uh, it's, it's unique, man. Well, I think radio is slowly dying. I mean, it's pretty obvious it's going to basically like full blown robot control. Well, oh yeah. Well, it's beyond that too. I mean, it's been getting snapped up by conglomerates uh, you know, there's, there's basically two or three corporations that own like, oh, I'm guessing probably 80% of the radio stations in the country and none of, none of the stations were on or clear channel. Um, <laughs> I, I would be on one that's clear channel. One of the stations we're on in Amarillo, Texas is, uh, uh, one of those three conglomerates. I forget what it is. It's uh, town square media, which is the third biggest one. It's like, uh, whatever, whatever they're calling um, Clear Channel now. It's called iHeart Radio, oh. and the the second biggest one is Sirius, I think, and then the third biggest one is Town Square Media. Those three together own a big majority of all the radio stations. And then like the fifteen or twenty percent that are left, and, and that's including talk radio and music radio. And then the 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 ones that are left are like mom and pop stations, where like literally a couple owns one or two radio stations. Um, you know, like a lot of times, like I call up a station and, you know, I, I get the wife on the phone and she's like, well, let me get my husband. And then he, he, you know, like they do everything. The two of them do everything. And, you know, slowly those are getting um, priced out of being able to like, first of all, like most of the advertising is going to the Internet. There's less money coming into radio, the FCC and like the Federal Trade Commission and other and like the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission are haranguing small business owners and especially radio stations to the point where like they can't afford to do it anymore. Like another, one of the things is uh, I, I talked to somebody in Louisiana, not in new Orleans, like in a small town outside of Louisiana, uh, new Orleans who runs a station. And uh, she said that the FCC like just walked in there one day, a guy came in, said, I need to do an inspection, which they can do. And uh, like the night before there'd been an electrical storm and they'd unplugged, the transmitter and all the equipment so it wouldn't get destroyed by a lightning strike. And then they'd plugged it back. She was in the process of plugging it back in in the morning and plugged the transmitter in, but hadn't plugged the emergency alert system back in, you know, the thing where the government can, you know, where Obama right. can take yeah. over your show by, you know, with his Blackberry. Yeah. <laughs> um, she hadn't plugged that back in yet. And she got fined $35,000 for that not being plugged in. Like a half hour later, it wasn't plugged back in. Yeah. And, and her, like, she only makes like 70000 a year. Like that Man. was like half of what she made that year. She had to wow. pay a fine right there. So that kind of stuff, you know, they're really putting the mom and pops out of business and the internet, just the market is putting them out of business to where like, you know, they're all getting bought up cheap by these conglomerates that are in bed with the government. It's, it's fascism for sure. And really like what I think is going to happen is, you know, the, the neocons, you know, like the Rush Limbaugh's and people like that, like, yeah, we don't like them. You know, we think they're square, but the government doesn't like them either. I mean, they're really, really critical of whoever's in office, but you know, if they're a Democrat, what I think is going to happen is I don't think they're really ever going to like, I don't think, you know, president Hillary or president Bernie, I don't think they're going to kick those people off the air. I think they're going to like relegate them to nighttime uh, and, and decide that, you know, radio stations have to serve the community. So they'll, instead of having syndicated, they'll have the syndicated stuff on it right in the middle of the night. And most stations power down to like a fraction of their power in the middle of the night. And there's less people asleep awake uh, listening. So I think what they're going to do is they'll have like kids from the local high school come in and do the programming during the day. This is my prediction. Hmm. And, uh, you know, they'll say like that serves the community and they'll just have kids just come in and just sit around and, like interview the local sheriff on why he needs more tax money for the drug war. <laughs> That's what radio is going to become. And, really? you know, really it's all about the internet and mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to censor the internet. I think people are going to be able to do what they want on the internet for a long time. 
Uh, well, you know, well, I, podcasting and I is basically making your own radio station all day. That's, I mean, that's what's replacing radio, in my opinion. I, I, I only the listen to radio better. The quality is better. So like, like uh, yeah, I mean, here's an example. Like, my show, The Freedom Fiends, is on, uh, we're on 31 terrestrial radio stations, and one of them is actually in my town, Casper, Wyoming. And I was told by somebody who's, uh, who, who is the, the guy who runs Talkers Magazine, which is like, you know, Billboard Magazine for talk radio. It's the industry magazine. Um, told me that I'm probably one of the only, if not the only, talk show hosts in America who can actually listen to his show on radio because it's on in my town and it's delayed by an hour or two or by two hours. So I can actually listen to it. Um, you know, most people are either live in their hometown or not on the radio in their hometown. But... Uh, I listened to it and it's a thousand watt station, which is pretty powerful, you know, for a small town. Um, it covers the whole town. And it, I mean, it covers to like, you know, a, a quarter of the state. Wyoming's big, like, you know, a hundred miles away, you can get this station sort of, uh, but like at my house and I'm, I'm pretty much almost line of sight with the antenna about a mile away. Like it sounds better. Our show sounds better on the podcast than it does on the radio. Hmm. <laughs> you know, like radio sure. just doesn't sound as good as a well-made podcast on the internet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would one hundred percent agree. <laughs> I mean, I you can know. pause it. <laughs> well, yeah, of course they can. You don't have as many ads. <laughs> you know, you can pause it. You can skip ads if they're there. Yeah, the ads kill me, man. <laughs> well, well, what what ads need to do is you just got to do the live reads, like in the middle of like a segment. You just have to read in the middle of the segment. Nah, I hate live reads. That's, I, that, that's the only way to get people to not go, oh, turn down the radio for five minutes while the ads are going. Or make ads that sound good like the Freedom Fiends do. Yeah. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm the a-hole that has, like, every ad blocked on everything that has <laughs> you, no cookies, no nothing, you know, turn down the radio. Do you listen to the Fiends, work? though? I do listen to the Fiends, the podcast. Yeah. Our ads are uh... – well, I can't. I, I can't avoid those. So if I can't avoid them, I have to hear them, right? No, you can skip them. You can, I, I you don't. Know. I don't. I don't. I like to. I like to hear the whole the whole intro to the Freedom Fiends. It, it gets me hyped up. <laughs> the <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, still get still gets me going every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, is, have, is, have, one, is well, I was, I was going to say it's it's interesting. I mean, it's interesting that you you know your theory for uh, you know where radio is going um, as like literally a tool of the state at that point. Um, I mean, I could see that. I kind of I, I I guess I was kind of thinking the opposite. I was thinking that because because everything's shifting towards the internet, that it will be it, because it becomes obsolete, it'll kind of become useless to everybody, and then. I mean, mm -hmm. is it is it at that point? What I mean, if that was the case, wouldn't it still be a useful medium for transmitting stuff? You know. <laughs> well, they'll be pumping it, it into public schools and prisons and stuff. Well, again, I'm saying if they, I I thought they'd forget about it, but I guess I think Michael's, I, I guess that kind of makes sense too that they would just use it to drone everybody out constantly, more oh, so yeah. than they do now. <laughs> Yeah, I think oh, yeah. Like, 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 like TV has become a tool of the state. I mean, radio is the same thing. And I mean, slowly TV is becoming obsolete as well, right? Radio is like a tool anything. of the state, though. I don't know if you guys listen to a lot of talk radio or look. I, I've looked at a lot of websites of talk radio because I have to look at them to find the information to contact them to get on them. They almost all of them have like a flag banner at the top of the, uh, the website. And a lot of them... Um, a really common interview for like a local radio station is interviewing the chief of police. They do it all the time and they interview all the local politicians and hmm. you know, all the interviews just basically come down to like, be very afraid. And you know, the government needs more of your money because be very afraid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got people dying on the streets every day. We need, we need to raise these taxes and save these kids. Yeah. Uh, I guess that makes sense. I haven't, I haven't listened to radio since I, uh, I, I just don't have time. <laughs> well, I don't even care about time. I, I, I don't find the time. I, st I stopped listening to the radio when I kind of started putting all the pieces together. So I just cut all that stuff out of my life. It was just easier. Radio, TV. Yeah, it, it, um, 
it always shocked me. You know, I used to listen to Sirius XM a lot, and I, I immediately when they fired Anthony uh, from Opie and Anthony, I called the same day, and I said, <laughs> uh, the reason I'm canceling is because you fired him for no reason, and, uh, well, whenever you hire him back, I'll resubscribe. Because, you know, I was like an ardent Opie and Anthony listener for like 10 years, you know. He's a status, though. He's kind of a right winger. Isn't oh, he? he's definitely. You know, I listen to it mostly for comedy, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, you know, whatever. I've always kind of been the guy that like always sits back and looks what's going on and kind of figures out what's the best uh, point or side. And I always before I, you know, found uh, anarchy and, you know, free, you know, the freedom, you know, I, ideas of freedom. Uh, I was always like conservative right wing, you know, and so I, you know, I always loved Anthony on the show. So I, I grew up with Howard Stern. <laughs> I, I've father, never been a big fan to, of, of Stern. <laughs> my father used to drive me to school. Like if, if I missed the school bus, he would drive me to school, play Howard Stern in the car. <laughs> and as I get into school, I open the door, he's saying bye. And, you, and he's blasting Howard Stern. <laughs> It's like, it's like, so how big are your boobs? That's <laughs> hey, funny. You're, you're, I see. I can't picture your dad was a Howard Stern fan. That's funny. Yeah, man. big time, big time. And I, I think I got, I got, I got him a little bit, but then after he got onto his serious right XM, he got and 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 then that's it. <laughs> oh yeah, he's Stern. He his he he lost his fire a long time ago. I think it was after he got kicked off of. When his show was uh, live on TV as well, no, I think when they stopped doing that, he was like, eh, whatever, I'll sell out to Sirius XM. And just, he was doing what, three shows a week? Monday was a replay of Friday, and Friday was a replay of Monday. Well, I, I think he's also. Or something like that. At, he's also been in the business for what, 40 something years at this point? I think he just wanted to cut back. <laughs> Can't really blame the guy. I mean, whatever. I, I listened to him for a while. He was, uh, you know. I bet Michael would like to cut back for fifty million. <laughs> <laughs> would like to what? Cut back? Yeah, cut back for fifty million. Cut back, my, 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 Michael can't. I'd keep cut back from for the... fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't want to cut back. I like doing as much as I do. But no, uh, it was. A, it was. A, I was being uh, ironic, or, or not ironic. I know. But, uh, I got nothing. I know, but I was answering it really <laughs> wow. for real. So, yeah. so the the Freedom Fiends is is this is your basically your project, and there's a ton of them. There's a ton of fiends on there. I, <laughs> I love I love listening to it because you can pick out your favorite fiends and and be like, oh, they're on this night, or they're on this night, or I don't really like these guys. So it's like it's not just the same two guys or the same one guy every night, and it's really I really like it. It's like a evolving roundtable that always is changing. Is yeah, Dave's sort of way of saying he doesn't listen when I'm on. <laughs> I hear your voice enough. Jeremy, I mean, it's, again? It's, it's like it's it's like how 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 much you know? It's like you hear my voice is enough. You're like, I don't need to hear him talk anymore. I, there's <laughs> nothing he's gonna say that I haven't heard. <laughs> so, but you know, on the fiends, it's like you know, Monday. Uh, I don't want to listen to that. Tuesday. Oh wow, two of my favorite guys are on, or two of my you know favorite hosts are on. And uh, I was just really impressed by how they stepped up when you were going through all that uh, the, that rough, I don't know, I would say six, seven months there. Yeah, I'm still sick, but I'm not nearly as sick as I was, uh, you know, six months ago, around May, June last year. I was horribly sick. I mean, to the point where I just was hoping I would die. I was that sick. Uh, I was I was basically, I have some kind of lung problem that, hasn't really been fully diagnosed. Uh, it's being treated to an extent. Um, it's it's basically a combination. It's basically really bad asthma and really bad allergies, like um, record-breaking allergies. Allergies are measured by something called IgE levels. And most people's people who aren't sick and don't have allergies are generally around 75 to 100. People who have allergies are like 300 to 350. Uh, IgE levels. My IgE levels were like twenty five hundred. I'm allergic um, to cats and dogs, and and it's not bad. Like my eyes really, really get bad, and my nose runs and bleeds sometimes. But uh, so I can imagine I'm like the average at allergic person. So you're like the Superman of allergic people. Yeah, yeah. 
And and part of it is that I I'm I'm allergic to smoke and I have asthma and I smoked for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, you know, I smoked two packs a day for 30 years and uh, I'm also allergic to cats and I had cats for about the past 22 years. Wow. And uh so I'm not smoking now and I don't have cats anymore. I think I um, read something about how to get rid of uh, they were curing allergies with cannabis oil or something. I can't remember. <laughs> No, don't. I was like, yeah. what? Don't, don't start. That. Like, don't start what? What is this stuff that. not cure? <laughs> yeah, I have like ten people a week write me and say, "You have to try this." <laughs> like this week, this week it was somebody said I had to try acupuncture, and somebody else said I had to try eating nothing but steak. Um, I'm really, I'm really. <laughs> I, mean, sick I do of the agree price. that you should eat nothing but steak, but <laughs> bacon, bacon. Danilo here is an acupuncturist, and uh, if you if you wanted some clarity on the on the on it, I'm no. sure he could tell you some stuff. No, I don't. No. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Don't start with that, man. Yeah, and it's not like. So you just think the cannabis oil thing is like snake oil? <clears throat> no, I'm just really sick of people with no medical training mm -hmm. telling me that their certain thing that they're happy about is something I have to do. And then they get mad at me when I say, no, thanks, man. <laughs> um, I mean, people are religious about stuff. Oh. And, uh, you know, another thing is like, after I quit smoking, um, I vaped for four years and I haven't vaped in nearly a year. Um, but I believe that the vaping is part of what harmed me and people who vape get really pissed when I say that. And like, you know, they basically say, Oh, you're just a pawn of the government. And <laughs> what it really comes down to is <laughs> what? not everything the FDA says is bad is good for you. Oh no. And I no, think a lot, sure. of, I think a lot of people who don't trust the government, you know, since the FDA is wrong on some things, they believe that if the FDA says something bad is bad, you should literally go out and take a lot of it because they think it's good for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, your vaping is not good for you. It might be better for you than smoking, but no, yeah, it's your no, body, no your lungs, your thing. lungs are not made to inhale, you know, sticky vapor. It's not what they're made. Yeah, to I mean, do. you do cough up the 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 vg all day when you vape like i do yeah well when i got off vaping um i couldn't breathe for like months like i had to be put on oxygen therapy and i'm still on oxygen therapy part-time but i had to be on it full-time and it still like barely barely enabled me to breathe i mean my oxygen level was like did you uh, feel like you had popcorn lung uh i've read about that I don't know because that's how PG if I do like a 50 50 I know what you know what that means so like if I do a 50 50 it really messes with me like it just doesn't feel right but if I do like anything like uh I normally shoot for like the the 10 or the 15 or the really really low PG and I don't have any issues uh no no like crazy breathing issues or anything like that and if I ever like felt like I was having something like that I would stop immediately but it's I, I way better smoke. than smoking cigarettes, I can tell you that much. I don't know. I think in a way it was worse for me personally because uh, I was able to do the equivalent of – like I was smoking three packs a day by the time I quit. Uh, I, was, I smoked two – I smoked 60-pack years. That's how they measure it. So like an average of two packs uh, – a day for for 30 years but it was basically like a pack a day for 10 years two packs a day for 10 years and three packs a day for 10 years so by the time i was done i was smoking three packs a day and then i switched to vaping but i on vaping since it didn't hurt physically hurt my lungs as much as smoking um i was probably vaping the equivalent of six packs of cigarettes a day Whoa. i mean i was smoking like you know 21 milligram uh vape and chain vaping it from the time i went up till the time i went to sleep to the point where i was so addicted to nicotine too that i would wake up after four hours craving it and have to vape and then go back to sleep yeah like, i yeah, couldn't yeah. make it That's, through eight hours to, of sleep the vaping, vaping is to fight you fight down your nicotine so like when i started i was on uh and you know it changes from like heat and coil and stuff and how much you, it disperses and stuff so like uh, 12 milligrams on like uh, my mod would like blow your head off if you're used to like even 28 on like a pin or something.
Oh yeah, 28, not 21. 28 is what I was doing. Um, well, I I didn't do any mods. I used off the shelf stuff, but it was still pretty. See now, the off the shelf lot. stuff is what has all the <laughs> crazy they, crap in it. Dave's, Dave's gonna try to convince you that it's. No, no, I'm not gonna try to yeah, convince you of yeah. anything. I mean, I, I, I mean, have you're, you to can you, you can talk about this all day long, but you're basically what this is equivalent to me is like. You know, I'm also a recovering heroin addict with 22 years sober, and this is like someone telling me, "Well, if you take your heroin only before <laughs> breakfast and only after lunch, you can, you don't get addicted, man." We I'm don't like, have to pick I'm our vice, gonna... Michael. You like cats, and you're allergic to them. Do her... Yeah, well, I had to give them up too. The road gets really narrow, man. I'm 52, and it's like, you know, what pleasure do I have left? I have coffee left, and I can barely drink that because I have high blood pressure from some of the meds I'm on. You know, oh, man. Oh, man. So, so, so let, 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 let me change the subject a little bit. Um, I just want to say that I, I, uh, we recently interviewed Nick Hazelton. We had him on the show, and and oh, I interviewed God. him re recently for my show. And I, I was really amazed at what he's done at his young age, and and how you helped him out with with getting his podcast you, you started. Built that. And, and that was really I built awesome, that. <laughs> you know. I'm really, uh, I'm really happy well, with. I mean, the you can really like see his change. Uh, if you go back and listen, like the first times he was on the show, like two years ago, he was, he was shy and meek, mm -hmm. and like, you know, like talk talked like this far away from the mic, and like, I <laughs> don't, you know, and and now he's like, he kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, those nature shows where you see like the, you know, the young juvenile young adult lion like challenges the sick old lion <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's doing to me now he's trying to take over my show i, I like I nick like a lot he's I like a really it. cool kid yeah it's, it's funny i i mean i i've actually i got to i got to know nick a little bit um uh before i started doing the fiends but he uh i actually when it was i think it was the first day the uh the app went live um yeah the, that was a great day i, I remember a, that day a, fondly it, it was a wonderful day um you I, guys I, have the app you guys have the freedom fiends app i sure do I have, the, I, have the, I, I have the LRN <laughs> app as well. Well, the LRN app is now obsolete because yeah, you use the exactly. I, I, I got I got rid of mine once I got it because you can still yeah. use it. Oh, the LRN app was so buggy on my phone. Um, it is. But no, the the, the first day I, I ended up using the the you know the twenty four seven feature. And uh, yeah. I landed a I, I landed a Nick episode from like an one old of the Nick first, one, episode. Yeah, one of the yeah. first times he was on, and it was like, oh my god, because I mean I've heard the I've heard the show that he did with the like what was it? I think he got, I guess he called in. Was it Free Talk that he called in the very first time Free Talk Live? Maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, and Brett, yeah, because uh, yeah, Brett uh, Brett uh, Brett Vinod just happened to be on there that night, I think. Um, but yeah, so like you 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 definitely can hear the transition. It's. I, I tell him all the time when I talk to him. I'm like, I'm so ha I'm so thrilled that he exists, and I'm jealous of him at the same time because <laughs> he put everything together so so much earlier than I did. Well, he's standing on the shoulders of giants too, and not just me. It's uh, you know, when I was 17, I hated authority, but I didn't know what to do about it, yeah. and I was constantly told to the point where I believed it almost that there was something wrong with me because I hated authority, like. I didn't know what libertarianism was when I was 17. I didn't know what anarcho-capitalism was. I don't think anybody knew what, you know, only only in, God, when I was 17, what's that? I was born in 64, 74, 84, 83, 84, 84, 84, in 81, you know, the only people who knew what anarcho-capitalism were were like academics, you know, like people yeah. reading Mises and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, there wasn't the internet. There wasn't, uh, you know, if I'd, if I'd had a book, called anything about anarcho-capitalism and I had it in school, they probably would have sent me to the principal's office. They probably would have called my parents. You know, they would have said, there's something wrong with this kid. Um, God, you're yeah. right. They would have. Yeah. Then I'm like, what are you reading? Is this like communist? <laughs> Although human, there's also, I got to say, there's also like good things that happened because there wasn't an internet and because everything wasn't so interconnected. I got away with things that kids wouldn't get away with now. And I'm not even going to say what they were. And there's, there's <laughs> nothing, there were no victims in any of this, but like I had curiosities about things when I was a teenager and reading things and looking for sources of information about things for things that like, you know, would get you the DHS knocking at your door now, <laughs> yeah, but oh like nobody God. knows it because, you know, it was in a local library and there's no record of it. Hmm. So yeah, true. Yeah, I only got that for a couple of years because I I, I I got to spend like a few years before the internet really took off. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Like people like Nick, like they 
they will not know. Well, actually, he, I guess, knows a little bit of what it's no. like. Well, wait, 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 when was he born? He's, he's only 17. He was he's born 17, in 98. 90, okay, all right, 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 right. So he never, yeah, right, yeah. So people living now, it's amazing that they're never going to experience life without the internet. It's to me, that's just, just, just. It's amazing, isn't un, it? Unheard of. I can't believe that. Wow. Well, uh, Ooh, I remember VCR tapes. Do you guys remember those? God. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I watched a lot of these rewind. shows. Like I was, yeah. I asked Nick if he knew what "be kind rewind" meant, and he didn't. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, how old are you guys? I'm all of you. Twenty-eight. I am 32. Oh, 33. Sorry. <laughs> you know, doesn't know how old it is. I just turned 39, so I'm getting up there. All right, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's. he's I'll be 52 in May. Yeah. I, I like the period that I've been alive. It's, it's an interesting period to be alive because, uh, you know, I mean, like, I was five years old. I watched the, the first man walk on the moon on TV. Uh, I watched the Vietnam War, which was the first, like, broadcast war on TV. And, like, it was anti-war as a kid. And that's the only, like, that's the longest-running belief I have is being anti-war. But I thought you had to be anti-gun to be anti-war until I was about, uh, you know, 40 and got guns. Everyone and, knows um, that guns are the road to freedom, right? Yeah, man. And, I, and I've watched, you know, I've watched technology change in a really broad way. Like this section of time I've been alive, you know, we've gone from like reel to reel tape recorders to like, you know, the F the Freedom Fiends app. And, uh, you know, we've gone from um, like like when I was a kid, like all I wanted to do was was communicate with people that I couldn't see. You know, I lived in I lived in this tiny little town in upstate New York. 3,000 people, really boring town, really boring people. Nobody really, you know, it, um, exceptional from there. I mean, the most exceptional person to ever come from my county besides me was Natalie Merchant from the 10,000 Maniacs and Lucille Ball. That's it. And uh, so I, when I was a kid, like I used to, they used to have ads in magazines like for pen pals, you know, like write to people you don't know and i and i did that and i would like i was always sending away for things and catalogs and uh you know trying to get in like i used to i used to do you do you guys have you ever heard those ads for like the government printing office in pueblo colorado it's one of the few things the government does that's useful and i don't think they do it anymore but they used to have like uh government publications on everything like if you wanted to know how to you know, alternate crops for better, you know, soil, or if you wanted to know how to like build a ham radio, or if you wanted to know how to learn Morris code, or if you want to learn how to can your own food, like the government had a pamphlet for under a dollar on that. And I used to order those all the time on all sorts of things. And then YouTube just, <laughs> well, yeah, there was no YouTube. There's no, you know, yeah, worldwide yeah, yeah. web. I mean, there was an internet, but it was like government and colleges only, and I'd never heard of it. I had heard of computers. Uh, I'd actually like sat down at a mainframe computer when I was 10 years old in 74 in New Hampshire when I was visiting my sister uh, at her college. Were you a big fan of AOL chat rooms? I feel no. like you weren't big no. on like a like the chat room, like the chatting either, like the mess no, I, I got on messaging. Uh, no, I got on, um, my history of computers is basically in 1991, you know, which is after like Windows 3.1 came out, but I had a DOS computer yeah. that could not connect to the internet. And I wrote my first novel on that. And that came out in like 99 and I self-published it. There was no on-demand printing. It's like, I went to a, a print house, you know, to a publisher mm -hmm. and got it printed. And, uh, Let's see. So my first computer that was connected to the internet was like a 386 Windows 3.1 that my sister had had. She worked at Cornell University. She works at Cornell. She worked at Cornell University, and uh, you know they bought her a 486. So she gave me her 386, and I had a friend in San Francisco help me get online with it. And so my my f like my first. I tried to I tried to get on using something called Fognet in 1995 or night well actually i had a job at one of the first internet cafes in 94 it wasn't an internet 
cafe. It was an internet steakhouse at 9th and Folsom in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, and I say that corner because that that corner, that, that commercial space is like destined to fail. Like every, like there, there, there were like four businesses a year open and close on that spot. And this was, uh, was they had the internet, they had dial up and they'd bring you a nice steak and you'd sit at your table. And the reason it failed was they didn't realize people wanted privacy. And like the, the <laughs> monitors were up on the wall for everyone to see what you were doing on the internet. And that didn't fly. So, cause everyone wanted yeah, to look at porn. Bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I was on the internet a little bit there. I was working as a, as a bus boy, as a four year shop, bus boy and dishwasher. So then in like late 95, no early 96, I got the internet at home and I actually, uh, pretty quickly got DSL, which nobody had in 96. And it was like, um, yeah, it was amazing. I had it, I had it because I was, uh, you had, to, you had to live in like one of three cities and you had to be like within a thousand feet of a telephone company. And I, I had both of those things. Um, so, so by, by the end of 96, I had like Pac Bell DSL at home and I had AOL for a minute. No, I didn't have AOL. I had Earthlink. I don't think I ever had AOL. Um, I had Earthlink for a couple months and then I got DSL and like, I never really got in the chat rooms and I'd, I'd used AOL at friends' houses, but it was like, it was such a walled garden. It wasn't really the internet, you know? It was no. like, yeah, you could mainly only be in their little walled garden with other AOL users, and I didn't like that. So, uh, yeah, I had I, I, I had DSL and my own website that I designed with, like, hand-coding HTML by my website, kittyfeet.com, went live, and I still have that domain, uh, went live Thanksgiving Day, 1996. I bet so you could sell that what? domain for a ton. Why? I don't think so. It, for what? A cat it, walking it, service? No, it could be a, like a, a, a funny site. I don't know. I mean, I can't have cheeseburgers, a massive site. So I had, I I had, a, I had a domain. One. I had a domain in 97 that... I probably could have sold if I'd held on to it, it was punkrocksex.com. <laughs> and that was before uh, the Suicide Girls. Like, I was envisioning making something kind of like Suicide Girls, and I registered that domain but never did anything with it, and then it expired a few years later. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so, well, you can't go back and get it? Someone took it. Well, no. Of course I'm not. not good at doing things just to make money. <laughs> I've never been successful at it. The only thing is I've made money at... And I've made a living doing my own thing for like 14, 15 years now. Um, but the only time I've ever, like the things I've made money at are things that I would have done anyway for free. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not the guy that registers a smart domain name and then sells it later. That's not my thing. Yeah. If well, you could go back in time, right when the internet came out and just buy it like Coke, Pepsi, <laughs> <laughs> those well, those you would have gotten sued away from. What yep. you should have done was registered things like drugs.com and sex.com. Like those <laughs> both sold for six figures at some point. Oh yeah, all the ones. Well, if you if you registered Twitter before Twitter was even made. <laughs> no, nah, Twitter just would have called itself something else. Yeah, hey, yeah, I gotta yeah, wrap right. it up here and go eat dinner. You guys you got any uh, final arguments or questions? No, Michael, that's all right, man. We'll let you run. Um all right. Thanks. Uh, it's been an honor, man. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks, man. When is this going up? Uh, it'll be up uh, Monday morning. All right. I have a, a recording of it, too, if yours crashed or anything. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Uh, awesome. Thanks, you guys. I'll be in Thanks Thank you, me. Michael. I'll be in Worms. Michael. Later. Thank Worms. you. Worms. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Worms. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys, you guys want to close up well, any, uh, any remarks? I, um... Yeah. It was really cool for Michael to come on. I really appreciate him coming on and talking with us. Uh, it was really cool just sitting here chatting and talking and getting to know him better. Yes, well, I, I've, I've heard a lot of those stories because uh, <laughs> I've, I've always been a big fan even before I got to be on the show. So, um, But it was fun, man. Uh, I mean, I'm glad he came on. I actually, I, I felt bad uh, when you told me that you asked him. I'm like, crap! I should have asked him because I want, <laughs> I wanted, I, I told you guys I wanted to last year, but that's when he was sick, so I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to bug him back then. So, 
This is, actually, this is the first time I'm actually talking to him, so that's really awesome. And well, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Well, see, okay. Now, see, now I have more to say. See, if you'd listen more, then you have, <laughs> then you'd have more interest in talking to him, and you could probably communicate with him more. He's very, he's very open to talking to people on, you know, Facebook right. and stuff like that too. So, yeah, he is definitely he is. He's very responsive and uh, answers people's questions, you know, as much as possible. Even, even he's get, a funny guy too. Yeah, and, and, as, and especially if you have audio questions. I mean, I'll put all the links in the show notes, but. I mean, heck, yeah. I I use this creamy radio, creamy radio audio uh, site for for this show when we started. So, oh yeah, we all did, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we all did. We are his uh, his uh, pupils. So, <laughs> awesome, excellent conversation, uh, gentlemen. So, if anybody wants to help us out, um, please do so through uh, Bitcoin or Patreon. The links are in the description. Uh, that's patreon.com slash seeds of liberty. Uh, to help us out, please, uh, if you like this show, uh, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, or just uh, give us some donations. Uh, we trade trade value for value. Um, so voting with your dollars, right? You want to see something more of in the world, you uh, pay for it, patronize it. So that's free market capitalism for you. Win-win. Vote with your dollar. <laughs> Excellent. So awesome conversation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care.